I'm Jacob from Rouse High School in Leander, Texas, and today I'm here at South by Southwest EDU with Daryl McDaniels, founding member of Run DMC and a pioneer of hip hop culture. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So tell us about your journey with therapy and dealing with mental health, and why do you think it's important for teens to know the benefits of therapy? My journey with mental health was kind of unexpected because um, I was probably in my 30s. It probably was like 1993. We touring, we opening up for Naughty My Nature, we opening up for Pac, we opening up for Biggie. So right when that happened, you would think, I'd be like, yes, I'm back. Life is good and everything. But in 1993, when um, that happened, I woke up the next day wanting to kill myself. And I didn't know what it was. It was just like this feeling in me and I sat there and I didn't know what to do. Just living with that void in me became very uncomfortable. Um, it became very painful. I didn't want to deal with this emotion anymore. While that was going on inside of me, people on the outside was like, suck it up, shut up your DMC. How can you be depressed? That's a question people would never understand. It just, just because I'm DMC, I'm no different from anybody else, you know what I'm saying? So I was living like that for four months and years. And then it just got to the point where I said, I can't take it no more. And I was at that point. I gotta get out of here. I'm trying to figure out, do I hang myself? Do I take the poison? Do I shoot myself? I'm, I'm, and I'm really there. And then one thought was, oh, if I do die tomorrow, if I do leave here, people know the Run DMC stuff but they need to know Daryl. So that was the idea for me to write my first book. I said, okay, just in case if I do kill myself tomorrow, I gotta write this book so I could be like, yo, what's up world? My name is Daryl McDaniels. You know me, one third from the groundbreaking rap group Run DMC. I was born May 31st, 1964. And, and then I was like, oh, I know my birthday, but I don't know no details about it. So just to make it more interesting for the reader, I'll call my mom's up. She calls back with my father, hey son, hey dad, we have something else to tell you. And I'm like, okay, what is it? Well, you was a month old when we brought you home and you're adopted, but we love you, bye. So I was um, 35 years old when I found out that I was adopted. Now, you gotta understand, I'm dealing with all of this stuff, not knowing what to do, not knowing I could go get help, not knowing it was okay to get help, not knowing that it's cool for hip hop, gangster, thugged out people to go get help, you know, because you're worried about what people are gonna think of you. The thing that happened was, um, the quick story was, while I was going through all of that, I met um, another adopted person, this lady named Sheila Jaffe, she's a casting director. I met with her and we just sat there and we talked. And I didn't know how powerful talking is, because my whole thing was, I'm not even dealing with the depression. Now I'm like, oh wow, another life adopted person like me, so I didn't feel alone no more. So we just basically talked and talked and talked. That was a catalyst to make me say, okay, let me go. If I'm gonna go down this route, let me go get clean and sober so I could have a sound body and mind. So I went to rehab to stop drinking. And it was in rehab I discovered the most powerful thing anybody in the face, on the face of this earth or in the whole universe could do for themselves. I discovered this thing called therapy. And it was in therapy where I was able to just sit there and do more of what I first did with Sheila. I was diagnosed with suppressed emotions. Yes, I'm an alcoholic and stuff like that. But I was able to speak about how I felt without being ashamed or feeling guilty or whatever people was gonna think about me. So you talked about that stigma behind uh, mental health. So what can teens do to kind of get over that stigma and get over that fear of going to therapy? The first thing they need to understand is talking about it to somebody is the first catalyst to empowerment. Maybe it's the man in the grocery store block that you've known since you was two years old. And when you used to come in with your mother, he or she used to give you a lollipop. Or maybe it's that, you go up to Mr. Leo, I've never told anybody, you gotta tell someone. That's the first step. Cause look, I was 35 years old in that same position, grown man thinking I'm the only person in the world. I opened up to the world and found out that everybody's going through something. 
I recently wrote a children's book called Daryl's Dream. It's about like uh, believing in yourself and being yourself. How can teens like focus on not really fitting in and um, self-identity and stuff like that? When I was young and little, um, I got teased, bullied, and picked on. I was a geeky, nerdy kid that wore glasses and went to Catholic school. I took the microphone and said, D is for doing it all of the time. M's for the rhymes that are all mine. C is for cool, cool ass can be. And Rum would ask me, why you wear those glasses? And I told the whole world, so I can see. I didn't wear glasses to be cool. If I didn't have them, um, I couldn't see without them. So my weakness became a power. So powerful that people that didn't even need glasses want to wear glasses now. So have confidence in what people think isn't cool about you because it's the coolest thing about you in the first place. For the Run DMC thing was just a setup for what I was put here to do. What I was put here to do is sit here as DMC in my Adidas telling the world to walk this way. I'm living, breathing proof that you could beat and defeat whatever it is you're struggling against. I had alcoholism, I had suicide, um, I got OCD, um, anxiety, all of that. But the, what I represent is you can do it. That's my main existence on this earth right now. In addition to still making some of the funnest music ever. Everybody's story can help a person or save a life. That's why we do this. Sir. Well, thank you for being here today. I appreciate the opportunity to interview you. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you.